Okay, for some reason I can't figure out how to add the sound to the other picture. <laughs> brain no worky, brain no worky. <laughs> brain do too much worky. <laughs> um. Yo, can you hear me now? Perfect. I did know my mic wasn't on. I couldn't um, figure out how to add it for some reason on that main screen. My brain didn't want to compute that. Oh. Shh, good boy. Hi. Do you want to come and say hello? Come and say hello then. Oh. Come and say hello. Here he is. Here's my Scooby Doo. Nom, 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 nom. Gizzy, gizzy. Say hello, Auntie Ina. I can't see you. <laughs> yes. Good boy. Covered in hairs again now. <sighs> How you all doing, guys? I thought we'd have a coffee chat today. Let me see if I can sort that camera out now, that sound out, hang on. Okay, is that working? Oh, there we go. I've done it. <laughs> Hi, Arthur. Hello, hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm looking a bit off camera. My camera, my screen is there. My chat is there and my camera is here. <laughs> I've got to pick one of the three to look at and chat is the easiest one. So that means I'm slightly looking off camera, which is a bit weird, I know. Um, but if I move it down, you'll only be able to see this bit of me. So... Hey Andrea. How is everybody? I thought we'd do kind of a coffee chat today. What's the weather like up north? Bloody horrible. Well, actually, it's it's not been too bad today. I've got all the doors and windows open. That doesn't mean it's dry outside. It's kind of every so often you think it's okay to go outside and it's actually drizzling, which I don't like. But I'm very excited because the next three days, according to my phone app, we know how accurate that is, but according to my phone app, there's going to be rain only overnight for Thursday and Friday Saturday and Sunday is going to be a scorcher and then Monday Tuesday Wednesday is going to be thunderstorms it would be nice if the weekend was hot <laughs> um, because as you know may know may not know hey guys hi Pearl Liz um, as you may know I have been doing a creativity class a summer creativity and inspiration class um, uh, I've called it the Midsummer Chronicles because it's kind of kind of like the Christmas Chronicles and the Halloween Chronicles, but it's about summer. Uh, so I thought, well, okay then, <laughs> we'll call it something Chronicles, Midsummer Chronicles. That'll do. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a minute because I had an idea about that yesterday. Uh, I'm a bit all over the place at the moment. I mean, I'm quite often all over the place. You know what I'm like. But at the moment, I just feel like I'm got eight legs eight arms <laughs> i'm octopusing i keep picking things up and starting them and putting them down and picking something else up and then having two things on the go at once and it's an odd feeling for me because i'm very aware of it and i don't normally have that problem i'm i'm a multitasker um but i'm usually pretty good at being able to do a project or work on a project for a specific amount of time but i just can't concentrate um this I think it's the Sagittarius moon, to be honest. I think that full moon has really thrown a lot of people. I'm not normally affected by full moon energy. It's the new moon I find particularly energizing. 
the full moon is kind of a more of a rest for me. Uh, I always describe it as being on a roller coaster and you get you go up and you have that moment of pause at the top and then you go down. <laughs> That's how it feels. Except this time it feels like you go up and then you <laughs> Thanks, Saj. <laughs> and coupled with it, um, and this is really weird for me. I don't normally get this at all, but I've noticed other people saying it. Every so often, waves of... I wouldn't exactly call it sadness, but nostalgia. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like... I suppose it is sadness in a way, but nostalgia for things lost or gone. If that's... I know, it sounds weird, but that's how it feels. And I'm not the only one saying it. A lot of people have said the same thing. You have the same feeling, Pearl, yeah. It's, it's weird, chaotic energy at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that after Litha, once I've done my Litha ritual, I'll be... You know? That's one of the things we're doing in the creativity class is a Litha ritual for cleansing, which is, you know, it sounds, it sounds very witchy, but it's not... It doesn't have to be totally witchy. You can make it as, as witchy or not witchy as you want. Um, in fact, we've got two Christians in the group <laughs> who are doing their own thing. So um, checking in from the hospital cafeteria, Rish. How's your, how's your grandma? Hey, a butterfly. Um, yeah, Sagittarius. I mean, I'm, I'm heavily Sagittarius in my sign, in my, my um, chart. So... Um, for those who don't know, I'm Sagittarius Ascendant with Jupiter on the Ascendant on a full moon. So I'm kind of like, anyway. <laughs> and then Jupiter's retrograde, which is like, and then Sagittarius full moon. I'm like, <laughs> it's like overwhelm, overwhelm. <laughs> Too much. Stop the world. I want to get off. <laughs> I can't settle. That's that's part of the problem. I can't settle. I keep having these ideas to do something and I go, oh yeah, I'll do that. And by the time I've got everything out to do it and I've, I'm have i ready and set, I, I, I can't sit down to do it. I've got ants in my pants, as my mum would say. Hey, Jen. But upset that she needs to sit still for a while. <laughs> yeah, I bet she is. No pain as far as you know. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. Chaotic. It's not even... You can't even categorise it as chaotic. I mean, I'm normally I'm chaotic good, but this is kind of chaotic weird. <laughs> very, very strange. Anyway, summer inspiration and creativity. Thank you for that, Miss Maddie. That extremely loud burp was Miss Maddie. Part of the reason I ran, started running this class that I'm doing, the Midsummer Chronicles, whenever I say my class, I mean the Midsummer Chronicles, which is not Patreon. That's a different thing. That's the other class. <laughs> See what I mean? Brain, stay. <laughs> the Part of the reason I wanted to do it is because one of the most common questions any artist gets not just me everybody gets it is where do you get your inspiration from where do you get your ideas from what, how do i know what how, what do i put in my journal that's a huge question i get all the time but what do i write in my journal what do i put in my journal um and i have two levels of answer for it one level is a little facetious because I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan <laughs> and his favourite answer is usually to say, well, I keep it in a box in the shed. <laughs> when I run out, I just go and get some more. <laughs> uh, and the other, I like to say, life. That's what you put in your journal. 
life. Hey Susan. Whatever is around you. I think a lot of the time, this is going to be rambly. Chaotic, weird energy, Sagittarius, blah, 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 blah. bear with me. <laughs> Those who like to just sit and drink coffee and draw and listen to me ramble and pick things out will be loving this video. The rest of you, I don't know, you, <laughs> you might want to go watch something else. <laughs> I did a, a video a couple back on um, creative books journaling books that you could use for journaling everyday life you might want to watch that instead <sighs> journal what you put in your journal is life henry moore was an artist and sculpture and one of the things he said was you an artist doesn't retire art is life you can't just stop it and uh, i think that's a paraphrase but that's basically what he said. And I was reminded of that the other day because, hmm, was it? Was it you, Pearl? Posted a Helena Bonham Carter quote, which I adore and had forgotten. Um, and he's now the lock screen on my phone. And it says, and I need new glasses, so I'm going to have to hold it out here. I think everything in life is art. What you do, how you dress, the way you love someone and how you talk. Your smile and your personality. What you believe in, all your dreams. The way you drink your tea. How you decorate your home or party. Your grocery list. The food you make. How your writing looks and the way you feel. Life is art. Helena Bonham Carter very wise woman terrible fashion sense very wise woman that's long been one of my very very favorite quotes about creativity and art and life and i think once you fully embrace that kind of idea you stop having questions about where do you get ideas where do you get inspiration where do you how do i Everybody concentrates on how do I, what do I, where do I start? It's all to do with that initial run up. I described it, I think, in the Midsummer Chronicles class in the chat, actually, as the run up to a handstand. You know, as a kid, when you did a handstand, you didn't just do a handstand, which is what you do now. No, you had to do the whole <laughs> elaborate thing, right? It was a... <laughs> I don't know where we all got that from, but we all did it. And that, to me, kind of sums up what a lot of people, when they say, where, how, what, do I, etc. It's that preliminary jumping off point where you're... It's not that you lack confidence to do. It's just that you haven't formulated what the do is going to be i've talked about this before and i know i'm kind of repeating myself but this class has really brought this to the fore for me that your creativity is so highly linked with your ability to problem solve and your ability to problem solve is your ability to plan Pla fail to plan, plan to fail. That's what they say, isn't it? So if you don't plan, you don't problem solve. And if you don't problem solve, you can't create. Simply because you don't know where to start. And I think that sometimes people confuse inspiration and that idea that you have to start, you know, where do you get this? Wah, here we go, I'm inspired, scribble, scribble. Where does it come from? It they they tend to think of it as like this ding light bulb, you know, uh, and that's not how it works. Um, Jack London, 
Another favourite quote of mine. I love my quotes. You know I love my quotes. You can't just wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. Picasso. Inspiration will come, but it has to find you working. It's all about preparing. In, uh, I, I talked about this before. Artists don't just sit down at a blank pad of paper and say, right, I'm going to draw something. What am I going to draw? That's not how it works. And yet that's how most people who aren't in that flow of accepting and being an artist and creative who are still at that point of, well, I want to do this. I really want to start, but I don't know where to start. What do I do? You know, you. it used to really confuse me. When I first started doing this, this is uh, actually on, what is it? Oh, I'm going to have to use my fingers. 19, 20, 21, 22, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, this Friday, I will have been on YouTube for 10 years. It's my 10 year anniversary on the 22nd. Still only got 11,000 subscribers. But hey, who's counting, right? <laughs> if that bothered me, I wouldn't still be here. Um, but yeah, seriously, share some share some videos, dudes. <laughs> uh, I threw myself off there, didn't I? Uh, 10 years on YouTube. And when I first started, I used to get really confused because people would say, Oh, I wish I could just sit down and draw something like you do. How do you know what to draw? You know, I, I would literally just sit down with my sketchbook and start drawing something. And it, the first question would be, how do you know what to draw? And I'm like, how can you not have something to draw? Unless you're blind, in which case drawing is going to be a bit tricky anyway. Although there are some incredibly good blind artists go and look it up on google it's amazing what blind people can do simply through touch and texture and a lot of them do sculptures and things and they are in a lot of cases better than the people who can actually see what they're doing i think because they have to try harder but you know that's a topic for another day How can you not be inspired? How can you not look around you and go, huh, I want to draw something. What shall I draw? Oh, I'll draw that pair of scissors. That's, that's interesting. Look, look at the difference between the shiny metal and the shiny plastic. I wonder if I can capture that in graphite or pen or how can I make that look shiny? Huh? Well, I don't know. I'll have to go and look it up on YouTube or go and look in one of my many books or something and to find out and practice and no, I'm too lazy for that. I'll just grab a grab a graphic. Maybe if I hold it like that. Oh, look, it goes very black and white. Maybe I can do it in pen with white highlights. Maybe I can do it on toned paper. How can you not have those thoughts? That's what was always in my head. How do you not have these thoughts? How do you not look around you and go, oh, this is a nice pen. I wonder if I can capture that clear blue. That clear blue. Look at that. How do you capture clear blue? Notice that with all these things, there's a question. How do I draw metal? How do I show the contrast between shiny plastic and shiny metal? How do I capture clear plastic? Ask a question. Solve the problem. Or, you know, at least attempt to. Even if you only attempt to, you're still being creative because you're still trying to answer the question. So instead of just asking yourself, what do I draw? Ask yourself, how do I draw that? And just pick something. It doesn't have to be something amazing. If you're starting out, there's a good chance your, your drawing skill doesn't even come close to what you wish it was. So there's a very good chance that whatever you draw is not going to be that great. That's fine. Accept it. Move on. OK, maybe it's going to be crap, but maybe it won't. And even if it is, if I learn how 
to draw metal, that's good. If I learn how not to draw metal, that's also good. You know, Thomas Edison, I didn't fail. I found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. Every step you take in problem solving is part of your creativity and it's a further step along that road to being able to find the answers that you're looking for. Also known as practice, practice, practice. <laughs> hey, Jane. Um, that's what we've been looking at in this class is, is just gathering things. And when I first announced the class, hi, hey, Sue. A lot of people were like, oh, what supplies are we going to need? Are we going to need to do this? Will we, how do we do this? Are we going to have tutorials? Da, da, da. And I was like, no, it's not about that. It's not about... That was one of my quotes for the... <laughs> one of mine. One of mine. Mine. Uh, it's not about learning to draw. It's about learning to see. Hashtag Romany's Realm. That's one of my quotes. You can quote me on that one. It's not about learning to draw, it's about learning to see. It was kind of the, the second thing of the class. Yeah, you have to be willing to learn. You're absolutely correct. You also have to be willing to fail. Now, I've had a few people who go, their immediate reaction to that is, failure's not an option. What is this, a space mission? <laughs> It's a sketchbook. It's a journal. It's a piece of paper that you're going to throw some stuff on. We are the only creatures on the planet who do this. I mean, yeah, monkeys draw pictures with sticks occasionally, but they don't. I don't think a monkey ever sits down and goes, right, I'm going to draw that tree. You know, if it did, it would be an incredibly good tree. Um, there's um, Shiba Art Online over on Instagram. His name's Hunter. He's a little Shiba and his his fur mum sits there with a paintbrush and she loads the paintbrush and he takes the paintbrush in his mouth and he squiggles it all over the canvas and he's really cute is that dog actually going oh yeah i'm gonna paint this like this no he's doing it because that's what he's been trained to do but he loves doing it he gets treats of course he loves doing it and he's a happy little chap and he's donuts wagging you know but it's not the creativity that we have it's not us sitting down and going, right, I'm going to draw something. I'm going to draw that wind chime, <laughs> you know? I'm going to draw that curtain and I'm going to capture how the fold of the curtain looks really weird from this angle. They, animals can problem solve. Animals are incredibly good, possibly better than us in a lot of cases at problem solving, but they're their creativity is limited to practical survival type skills. Let's face it, journaling is not a practical survival type skill. You know, the last thing you're going to be doing if you are in a survival type situation, probably, is worrying about what you're going to write in your journal, right? What am I going to write in my journal? You know, you've, you're in a plane crash, okay? You're one of five survivors. You're in the Andes. You've got some food, you've got some warm clothes, rescue's on its way, you're not too worried, but you've got a few t few days to kill. Are you going to sit there and go, what am I going to write in my journal? Are you hell? <laughs> you're going to write about life. You're going to write about the life that's happening around you. What's happened, where you are, what's around you, what's different. What's different about you? What are you learning? What are you problem solving? How are you creatively getting through this situation? You know, and a journaler would be doing that. They wouldn't be just sitting there going, oh, but I don't, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. They're just going to get on with it, right? Letting your intuition lead you. Exactly. That's exactly where we're going is letting your intuition lead you. It's too easy to look at something and go, OK, I, I, I guess I'll draw this pair of scissors. All right, I'll draw this pair of scissors. Let's have a go. 
and then you start thinking about it bam there goes your creativity you're like oh but i don't how am i going to get that all straight they're straight i can't draw a straight line you start doubting yourself you start wondering how you're going to do things but in a negative way it's almost like i better put those scissors down or stab myself with them um let's stick with a pen a pen a pen, a pen is less less scary um <laughs> How are you going to draw the pen? And people focus in on the bits that they automatically assume that they're going to find hard. How am I going to draw a straight line? I can't draw a straight line. I can't draw a pen. A pen is a straight line. It's lots of straight lines. I can't draw a pen. That's not going to happen, is it? Well, why isn't it going to happen? Because you're allowing yourself to tell yourself that it's not going to happen. But your intuition said, screw it, let's draw a pen. And at that point, your question shouldn't be, how am I going to draw that straight line that the pen requires? The pen is not requiring a straight line. The pen is not sitting here going, buddy, if you're going to draw me, you better make a damn good job of it. I want to be able to recognise myself. My colours, I'm very attached to this grey. You better you better get this grey right. The, the pen doesn't care. The pen doesn't have feelings. Anything that you attach to the outcome of drawing this pen comes from here. And intuition comes from here. So what's happening? Your brain is overruling your, your heart. Heart chakra, soul chakra, the solar plexus. Here, your intuition. That's where your creativity comes from. And if you allow Nora up here, or whoever you call her, to dictate what your pen must look like, this is just going to get crushed. This needs room to breathe, okay? Think of your creativity as being within your rib cage, okay? If you, if you need a visual, think of your creativity as a ball, a wibbly, wobbly, mass of timey-wimey stuff, okay? And it's in your rib cage. What happens when you breathe to your rib cage? It goes, right? Because your lungs need room to breathe. So if your, if your creativity is in there, it needs room to breathe. You can't cage it in. With Nora up here going, oh, you better be able to draw that straight line. Oh, and that it's not just a straight line. It's not just one straight line. It's two straight lines. And those two straight lines are parallel. Oh, my God, you're not going to be able to do this because you can't draw one straight line. How are you going to draw two and make them parallel? That's overthinking. For me, and I learned this at a very early age, um, I was very lucky. My mum's creative. My dad is a problem solver. He's an electrical engineer. So he was always the practical problem solver, you know. Um, my mum was the artist and visionary. My dad was the one who made it or made it happen. Hey, Pelican. And they always had this set of teamwork where if my mum had a vision... My dad never once said, oh, no, you can't do that. No, that, that's not possible. His answer was always, huh, I never thought of doing that. Leave it with me. You know, he always wanted to think about it. So for those of you who are having the mental block of not letting your creativity come out because... Nora's telling you, oh, you've got to be able to draw two straight lines and make them parallel. <sighs> you don't got this. Uh, why don't you give her something else to think about? Ooh, that came out of nowhere, didn't it? Give her something else to think about. Give her a job. Give her the problem solving part. Nora's sitting there like... Oof. You can't do this, can you? That's just never going to happen, is it? So yeah, okay, okay, Nora, I get, I get it, I get it. Okay, I, I I'm going to struggle to draw two parallel straight lines, but am I hosting one book July this year? I host out one book July every year. 
One Butcher Lie is an ongoing thing. We always do it every year. Year six. How about taking the pen apart and saying, OK, Nora, well, how about this? Here's an ellipse. I can draw an ellipse. Here's a point. I can draw a point. How am I going to make those two look like a pen? Hmm? How, how can I make those two look like a pen? Because I know how to draw them. Anybody can draw an ellipse. Anybody can draw a point. But how do I make an ellipse and a point look like a pen? In fact, for that matter, if I, if while I figure out how to draw two parallel straight lines, why don't you figure out how to get those two parallel straight lines to look like a cylinder? Because um, two parallel straight lines aren't going to be a pen, are they? Give her a job. Overthink, but do it in the right way. You're going to make me talk about One Book July. You're going to try and make me talk about One Book July. I'm not talking about One Book July. I'm not doing One Book July today. One Book July happens every year. It's happened every year for the last five years. This is year six. Every year we tell you the same thing. Somewhere between the 21st and 23rd, there will be a main introductory video. Usually it's on my channel. This year it's on Vicky's. Uh, I'm a bit, bit over stretched at the moment so Vicky's doing the intro video make sure you're following her links over there somewhere there I don't know it's on the front page of my channel go follow Miss Vicky B if you're not already every year we say the intro video will go up somewhere between the 21st and the 23rd and somewhere between the 28th and the 30th all four of us will do our own intro individual intro videos for what we're doing for the challenge so before the 1st of July, every year, in the last week of June, you get five videos. <laughs> and every year in the middle of July, June, everybody goes, are we doing One Book July this year? What's, what's One Book July? Are you going to do a video for One Book July? You people. Yes, we're doing One Book July. Keep an eye out on Miss Vicky B's channel. I think she's posting her video over the weekend but I'm not 100% sure she hasn't confirmed the timeline yet but she's filmed it it's already being edited and ready and I'm sure it will be ready Monday probably at the latest but she will definitely be doing a video that's the only change this year is she's doing the video intro video because I've been really busy so now we've got that out of the way let's switch views I'm going to show you a couple of things that we've been doing in our inspiration class um i haven't been able to get yet to get out and do any of my outdoor inspiration the idea was i was going to go out and visit places and do stuff and instead i've ended up sitting home and collaging because it's been raining ever since i started this happened the last time i ran this class about six years ago and it's happened again but hopefully this weekend dry weather i don't mind if it's cold I don't mind if it's a bit windy. I don't mind if it's cloudy, as long as it's not raining. I hate the rain and <laughs> it keeps raining. <laughs> anyway, this is the kind of stuff I've been working on. Um, I'm just going to do a quick flip of a few bits and pieces that I've done. Um, this was just, I had a few extra bits from my other collages that I didn't feel were going to be used in the individual element collages so I started sticking them in the front of my book and I've got the back of my book as well to do when I run out of things because I've got this is um mostly earth and air mostly air I'm a very air oriented person um and this will probably be fire and water or leftover bits that don't fit into fire and water whatever so clearance cleansing being adventurous I use this is the Jane Davenport washi tape with all the little words on mystical lovely dreamy hopeful wishful magical adventurous is that awesome I really like that I didn't like that washi tape when I first got it but it's grown on me the mermaid one still hasn't um it wasn't until I started putting this all together that I started seeing kind of a theme if you like an awful lot of 
this kind of feeling. Which, funnily enough, is one of my mannerisms. I do that a lot. Oh, what was it I was trying to think of? That's my, hang on a minute, I'm thinking stance. And that recurs a lot in these pictures. Be more dog. Be more dog has become my life mantra. Just let it be. Just let it be. Stop worrying about everything else. And just, if you're in the park, be in the park. <laughs> you know? Discover your divine purpose. I just liked the way that looked written there. I didn't have any particular reason for putting it there. Well-being, heal your life, access your subconscious self to find answers. Just learning to let go, learning to enjoy what's around you and treat that inspiration and the gathering of that inspiration as creativity. Everything doesn't have to be about, oh, I'm going to draw a pretty picture. It doesn't have to be about I'm going to journal in my book and it's going to be the most wonderful, insightful entry about such and such. And, you know, I'm going to look back on it in years to come and go, wow, I wrote that. Everything doesn't have to be like that. Sometimes it can just be a collection of really random, pretty images that you go, well, it's a mess, but I like it. <laughs> you know, if you look at it and it, it gives you that feeling of, ooh, that's what I look for. I look for that feeling of ooh, because ooh means I'm having an idea. And the bit that comes before having the idea is, <laughs> that's me. It might be different for you, it might be a different feeling for you. Some people, I'm like I say, I'm an air, I'm Aquarian, I'm, an, I'm an, very much an air person. So a lot of my ideas just, kind of literally just drop out of thin air <laughs> at me <laughs> which is a weird way to put it but you know some people have to earth people have to plant and cultivate their ideas okay you have to tend them you have to nurture them and make them grow okay air people have to grab their ideas as they run past you know whoa there's one <laughs> got it <laughs> Water people, it's similar, but it's a bit slower. Sometimes it, it trickles past like a stream. Sometimes it comes gushing at you like a waterfall. Sometimes it's a bit stormy and chaotic like a sea. Other times it's perfectly calm like a mill pond and you can see the exact reflection of what it is you want to do. And some people are fire where they burn with some kind of passion to create. Uh, it doesn't need to... It doesn't need to be anything. It just is. Fire people are very much, they're often very intuitive with their art. They're often very um, abstract with their art. And it's more about done is better than perfect. It's all about creating. It's not about what it, what it ends up being. It's about making it. Um, so you have to know what your creative energy is like. If you can pick what your creative energy is like, then you can not only learn to cultivate the other three ways of energy, uh, but you can also learn to understand your own. I never understood for a long time why, and really until I started studying astrology, actually, why there were people in the world who didn't have ideas <laughs> or felt like they didn't have ideas. Oh, I couldn't come up with something like that. And I was like, what do you mean you couldn't come up with something like that? And nine times out of ten, they'd be earth people. Earth people need to find a seed of inspiration and plant it and nurture it and let it grow and give it time to mature. And then it turns into something that you're like, oh, now I can pick the fruit. Now I understand what I'm meant to do with it. Summer holiday colours come to me. Blue sky, sea, clear summer night skies. Relaxing. That's... That could be air or water. It could be, sub, it could be fire as well. There's definitely no earth in there. <laughs> um, summer holiday colours... 
But when you think of summer, you immediately think bright flowers, blue skies. Right. Well, unless you live in the UK, then you go, oh, I <laughs> guess it's the rainy season. Um, blue skies, clear summer nights. You sound like an air kind of space, open spaces. It's not about the sea. It's not about the water. It's about the expanse. It's not about the summer holiday. It's not about the, the fire of the summer. It's about the escape, the being away, the getting away, the going, exploring. Uh, that's a very Gemini type thing. Gemini and Sagittarius. Especially with the clear summer night skies. That's, you know, freedom. The ability to just go out and look at the stars. That's, that's very air. Hey, John. I think one reason I always have a notebook with me is so I can write down everything that comes to mind. I'm a Gemini. If I don't write it down, it flies away too fast. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, if Aquarius is... Let me grab that idea before it runs away. Gemini is like, oh, oh, look at all these ideas. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, write it down. <laughs> write it down. <laughs> um yeah i like blue i like blue the other air sign libra th this this is the three air signs okay aquarius idea grab it idea grab it idea grab it <laughs> Oh, there's one that hit me in the head. You know, sometimes they don't. we don't have to grab them. They just appear out of nowhere and go, boom. Mr. Gideon, you're not paying attention. You know, that happens a lot. Libra is like, oh, here's an idea. Ah, oh, here's another idea. Now, which one should I choose? I could go with this one. Or I could do this one. Eh, yeah, we'll get. they'll get back to you in a couple of years. Gemini is very much like the like the cash grab game, you know, when they used to put people in a in a tube, in a wind tunnel tube, and there was paper money flying around, they could have to grab as much as they could. That's Gemini trying to catch ideas as they come fly, flying past. Blue makes me happy. I love blue. Blue is a very calming colour. For me, it's dark blue because dark blue symbolises space, which is, that's me, the cosmos, air, space out there somewhere the stars the expanse of the night sky if i am pieces would that oh pisces you mean would that automatically mean i was water yes unless you have an extremely strong something else in your chart you'd have to look at your astrology chart for that um it's possible you have a a very strong something else in your chart but yeah if you're a Pisces you're going to be watery intuition um, each of the elements like air there's fiery air which is Gemini all over the place Blah! there's Libra air which is earth do I want this one or do I want this one pick one meanwhile there's all these ideas whizzing past and Libra's like I've got these two ideas which one am I going to use <laughs> you know and then there's Aquarius air which is a bit more watery like oh I feel like doing that one. Oh, I feel like doing that one oh I like the look of that one you know we're very intuitive I just pick it out of the air and it happens so if you know your astrological sign and obviously you know one cap does not fit all i'm not saying all pisces are like this or all aquarians are like this i have a lot of fire energy as well because i'm very jupiter and sagittarian in my chart so i have a lot of fire energy so not only am i like oh i need one of these oh i need one of these that looks good that looks good i'm not just grabbing ideas i'm also doing something with them leads to an awful lot of started projects and not an awful lot of finished ones <laughs> um but pisces is more of a there's 
Scorpio is the water earth because they go down. It's, it's all about going deep. Scorpio is deep sea diving. OK, it's all about getting to the bottom of the water to where the earth is. When you hit, hit earth in the water, you know, you've gone as deep as you can go. Unless you brought a spade, in which case, you know, Scorpio will keep going. Or find an underground cavern. That's another of their favourites. Um, cancer is all about feelings. And what do you... What do you want? How do you feel? How does this make you feel? Which is a nurturing energy. That's, that's earth energy. Cancer is quite often... Oh, but do I really want to do that? Is that really what I want to do this? Is that is that how I really want? Does this piece feel the way? Cancer don't care if their drawing is good or bad. They care about whether it feels the way they wanted it to feel. And that's earth energy. That's nurturing. You have to nurture that. You have to grow it. Pisces is your spiritual kind of um, just going to download a few inspirations from the universe. What you got for me today? And it just happens, you know. And that's more of an air. It's more of a, rather than actually physically reaching out for it, like Aquarius would do, or Gemini, it's more of a, you just kind of get an automatic download from the universe, as the New Agers would put it. Uh, it's 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 kind of like Pisces is kind of like knowing the Beatles lyrics. Everybody knows the Beatles lyrics. Even if you don't know Beatles, you know the Beatles lyrics. It's just like amniotic stuff <laughs> that just is absorbed into you without you really thinking about it. It just happens. It's just there. It's a part of everything. And that's very much Pisces creativity. Um, Pisces are the few kinds of people who don't they're they're so often being creative that they don't really think about what am I going to draw because it's more about what am I going to create today where am I what what of the many ideas that I have and all the things that I I have going on do I want to explore today uh, and then your fire signs are the action Sagittarius easily overwhelmed takes on more that they could chew Fire signs are all about get it done, start it, let's go. Sagittarius is very flighty, symbolised by the arrow, right? That's what I'm aiming for. Off we go. Always seems like a good idea at the time to a Sagittarius. That often means that you have a lot of unfinished projects, which is me. That's because my rising is Sag with Jupiter my main, um, my sun sign is Aquarius, conjunct Mercury. So I'm all about, oh, let's grab all these ideas and then let's start them all at the same time. Because this sounds like fun. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's an entertaining anyway. Um, so if you, if you work out what your energy is, you can pinpoint where to start. And once you already know where to start, you never have that feeling of, but what, how do I, what do I? It's all about expressing. And your immediate questions for Nora are all tailored towards expression. Here, Nora, stop worrying about how many straight lines we can draw and go and figure out what two colours I need to mix to get this? Okay, great. I can have a hundred things going on at once. Yeah, you probably have a lot of Sag in your chart, Rose. You're a Pisces, aren't you? Sagittarius sun with a lot of Pisces. So you're the other way round. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Cancer born on the cusp. There's no cusps. There's no such thing as a cusp. You're one thing or another. Your process being like Leo, that could be to do with your fifth house. Your fifth house is to do with creativity. 
um, and problem solving. <laughs> it's your sun area, your what is, how do you perform when you're under pressure? What do you do? Um, kind of like, I always think about it like so the sun is a spotlight and Leo is the performer. Okay, so creativity and problem solving is that moment where you're put on the stage, the light comes on and suddenly you've got to do something. You're like, oh, OK, what do I do? And you're going to have different reactions to that. Some people are going to be like, oh, hell no, I'm out of here. Off stage. <laughs> you know, others are going to be like, "Ooh, this is fun. What can we do with this? Others are going to stop and think like, oh, uh, OK, I've obviously got to do a performance. What am I going to do? Uh, could do that. Could do that monologue that I know from show. Oh, I don't know if I know the, the middle bit, though. I always forget the lines in the middle. I could, I could tap dance. I could tap dance. That would. Mm, no, I wouldn't. I, they probably don't have a pianist here and I, I don't really fancy tap dancing without music. Oh, I could I could batten twirl. You know, that's where you get into the overthinking. And that's the process that people get stuck in when they're doing journaling, that they're like, which bit am I going to do? And it all ties in with this question of what is journaling? Well, journaling is art. It's creativity. If you're cre if you're writing a journal, you th think of the things that you do in a journal. You write, you draw, you sketch, you paint, you collage. You take photographs and put them in. All of those things are creative things. Therefore, journaling is simply capturing all those creative things in one place, which makes journaling a creative hobby in and of itself. Now, there are artists in the world and there are art critics and you can't be both. It's very different. That's not true. You can be both, but it's very difficult to be both. If you are an artist, you have a vision in your head of what art should be for you. OK, but your vision of art doesn't mean that you are qualified to critique somebody else's art. Equally, an art critic might be extremely good at, you know, knowing current trends, pinpointing what people like, knowing what's commercial, knowing what's going to sell, being able to tell when something is very, very skillfully made or if it's just really amateur and you have no idea on perspective. But they can't necessarily do it themselves. OK, <laughs> just because you can critique art doesn't mean you can do art. And just because you can do art doesn't mean you can critique art. So if you're not an art critic, you're an artist or creative, you're creative, you're not a critic. You should be making stuff. You shouldn't be judging stuff because of all the people in the world, as a creative, you are least able to critique things because the whole point of critique is that it's fair and balanced and it gives an overall view of what's going on. And you can't do that because you're far too attached to it. So stop critiquing it and just start doing it. Get on with it. Don't look at it and go, oh, but if I stick this here, it's going to, oh, but if I put, I like that picture, but if I put that there, I won't be able to stick anything. Stop overthinking it. Just do. I've learned if I get stuck, I just go and do all of it. This is why I love you, Cody. <laughs> She's just summed up this entire chat in one line. If I get stuck, just go and do all of it. Yeah, if you don't know what to do, do everything. Do a bit of everything. Sooner or later, something will... S For those of you who, who are very into house cleaning, and I know this is a strange analogy for me, but those of you who are very into keeping a tidy house or keeping a clean, clean, clean house, like super clean. If you don't feel like doing housework a particular day, Nine times out of ten, ten you're still going to do it. You're s because it will nag at you. You'll have to do it. You'll have to. You don't want to, 
But you have to because you just know that you will not feel right in yourself if you don't at least wash the dishes and put a load of laundry in. Somebody else can get it out and put it on the line later when they all come home. But for right now, you really need to get that laundry put in. And once you get started, you go, oh, well, if I'm going to do the laundry, I might as well change the beds because then the beds can go, oh, and I might as well go and change the towels. And if I'm going to change the towels, I might as well clean the bathroom. And if I've got the cleaning stuff out, I might as well do the kitchen while I'm at it. Well, if I've done the kitchen and the bathroom, I might as well do the floors. Right. And it, it snowballs from there. I have no practical experience of this, but I've seen my mum do it. OK. <laughs> hey, Luna. Um. what it's like for the fire signs okay that was one for the earth signs for the fire signs you don't feel like going to the gym let's face it nobody feels like going to the gym but you don't feel like going to the gym but you're going to why because you're going to get up and put your gym clothes on you're gonna say to yourself well i don't feel like going to the gym but i feel like going for a walk so i'll put my gym stuff on i put my trainers on by the time you do that you go you know, if I'm already out here with my keys and my water bottle and everything else, I might as well get in the car and just go down the gym. So you go down the gym and by the time you're at the gym, you're like, well, you know, I was going to go for a walk. I just do like 20 minutes uphill on a treadmill. And then you get kind of energised and you're like, well, I'm here now. I've paid my, my five quid. I might as well stay for the whole two hours. I'll go and do some weights while I'm here. You know, I'll go and do some of this. I'll go and do, well, I've done everything else. I might as well do some cardio. You know, it snowballs. Air is a whole other matter. We, t we tend to get flighty. We, we need anchoring. Water tends to be the same thing. They, you know, they, they have to feel like doing something. They, uh, uh, water people are often the people who say they don't have the motivation to do something. And for them, I don't have the motivation translates to I don't feel like doing it. But for a water person, that, that, like an air person will go, well, I don't feel like doing it, so I'm not going to. I'm going to go and do something else that I do feel like doing. Um, a water person will actively say, well, what do I feel like doing? Or why don't I feel like doing that? What's stopping me from doing that? They'll explore it and they'll look at it and go, OK, why don't I? Oh, OK, because if I do that, I'm going to have to do this. Let's make a plan. We'll do that today, we'll do that tomorrow, and then we'll feel like doing that. And there we go. Off you go. It snowballs from there. And that's that's exactly what that's exactly what Cody said. If you get stuck, just go and do all of it. Sooner or later, one of those things will go, I'm more important than the others. You'll start cleaning your house or you'll and and you won't want to do any housework, but you'll start by doing the dishes because those really have to be done because you don't have any coffee mugs and you need a cup of coffee. And then you'll say, well, I'm already doing this. So while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, I just give the floor a quick sweep. Well, I've swept it, so I might as well mop and you'll get into something. For those of you who sit down at a blank piece of paper and go, but I don't know what to do. Stop cutting and pasting. So, oh, yep, yeah, blue cut and paste. Exactly. That's what I do. If all else fails, I sit there. I don't know what I'm going to do. Usually I have an idea of what I'm going to do before I sit down. That's the difference between people who are creative regularly and people who sit there going, oh, but I don't know what to draw. I don't know what to write about. What do I put in my journal? Where do you get your inspiration from? You know, those people are the ones who didn't have a plan. The people who just sit down and get on with it are the ones who already knew what they were going to do before they sat down at the blank page. But sometimes you have that moment where you think, I want to be creative, but I don't have anything that's itching. I've got the creative itch. I want to just do something. And some people, you know, some people are drawn to colour. I know Courtney does this. If she has that creative itch, and she doesn't know what else to do. She'll just get her paints out and start swatching colours until something happens. Um, I do the same with bits of paper. I will just rummage through my, ooh, here's an interesting bit I found in a magazine box and start sticking it in. And it could start with something like this piece. This started with this piece because I really liked this picture, but it didn't fit into my air. 
section because I'm very air, so I have a lot of air pictures. Um, so that's my air. <laughs> it didn't fit in there. If I put that in there, I couldn't fit all these in there. And these were more air than this one. So I thought, well, I'll put this one down and just make it... Ooh, moth. Go away. And just make it general creativity. I could have sat there and worried about, oh, but I'm going to cover it up. What happens if I run out of room? What if this? What if that? And I didn't. I just started sticking stuff. And eventually you get to the point where you go, well, is the is the picture going to be detrimentally damaged and fundamentally changed if I cover up her hand a bit? Nah. Because she's got another hand here. You can see her arms are doing the same thing. Logic tells us her other hand is there and she's going like this with her headphones on. Is it going to be fundamentally changed if I can't see the top of her head? No, because the important thing is that you can see her face and she's got headphones on. She's lost in the music. You know, that's the important parts of the picture. So as long as you don't cover up the important bits of the picture, you can do whatever else you want. And you don't really need to worry about it. You can just plonk things down on a page. I'm a collage artist at heart, so I start cutting and gluing and then go with a little bit of watercolour and usually and then we're off to the races. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Except I use acrylic or gouache, not watercolour. But yeah, that's basically what I do. Um, and sometimes the cutting and gluing just keeps going and going and going and going until I'm at this point. And then I go, well, OK, I really don't have much room to do anything else. So I guess the next step would be kind of merging in some of these colours, getting rid of some of the hard edges, because I'm not a hard edge kind of girl. I like this kind of stuff. You know, maybe doing, putting in some patches, painting out something I don't like. Maybe I'm not sure about this one. Um, maybe I'll paint that out or paint bits into it or paint a patch here and put in a quote or something or maybe I'll extend these colours along here so she doesn't look like she's in the middle of nowhere that kind of stuff and then you get so into it that like five hours later you go hmm maybe I should get up and go to the loo because if I don't I'm gonna wet myself yeah that's what normally what happens <laughs> not wetting yourself but you you know you get to that point where you realize that you missed lunch You've only had one coffee since breakfast. <laughs> you haven't got up out of your chair for four and a half hours and suddenly you try to and your knees won't work. And, you know, that's what happens to me. That happens to me a lot. I just get lost in the process. And the next thing I know, you know, that <laughs> that um, that meme is that my life is that meme or it's time for pizza. Yeah. You get interrupted by the, the guy ringing the bell with the pizza. Um that's usually what happens to me. I get hungry <laughs> and then I realise that I've spent six hours sitting at my desk and not moved. Or the dogs start barking at me because they want to go out. But you just kind of get lost in the process. If you allow Nora in your head to tell you that the process is going to be a problem before you even start, then you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to be able to start the process because you're too busy thinking about how hard the process is going to be. If you sit and think about how hard it's going to be while you're at the gym and how, oh my God, I'm going to be all hot and sweaty and nasty and I'm going to have to have a shower, I'm going to have to do this, and then I'm going to be hungry afterwards, I'm going to have to have a healthy meal because I've just been to the gym, I can't just stop by McDonald's. And, you know, if you start feeling like that, you get up and your bum feels square, yeah, or flat. I've had that happen before where the, the whole of the back of my legs has just felt completely flat. And I'm like, that's weird. The fur baby's pee pee dance. Yes. Well, Scooby just comes and shouts at me when it's time to to go out or head to the P.A.R.K. or, you know, the W word. Um, I'm just kind of flipping through my book here of kind of stuff I've been doing. I've just been putting quotes in and this was our our oracle card that came up for the class we were talking about um, creativity and how you've treated your creativity in the past and how it works for you now i've been collecting quotes as a steve jobs one um, when you ask creative people how they did something they feel a bit guilty because they didn't really do it they just saw something it seemed obvious to them after a while 
spoken like a true air sign. Um, so we've been doing stuff with different elements. We broke it down into elements. So we did earth the first week. This is my earth collage. Um, I'm not going to show you everything. I've got a few. I've got a few works in progress. That one's a a drawing I did while I was away. While I was uh, working on this. I've got a work in progress there. Uh, then we did air. So that's my air sign one and it was all about um, fairies and mushrooms sorry for earth we've done leaves and trees so there's a lot of um, drawing inspiration from again this wasn't you think leaves and trees and what I encouraged the class to do was not just say oh we're going to do draw leaves and trees you automatically take that literally and go right I'm going to go and draw a tree the point of it was to expand that and look differently at the world I saw these um, acanthus leaves on a the top of a Corinthian column. I was like, oh my God, look at those. They're so pretty. And straight away I had to draw them. Um, this girl with her masquerade mask that looks like the green man. I thought that was really cool. So we've been doing all sorts of things. Drawing herbs. Um, that one's finished. So I've done a whole page on herbs. This is all gouache. This is one of my Patreon tutorials, actually. Um, that's I haven't done much on Earth. I was a bit busy Earth Week because I had the Urban Sketches thing. So I was busy doing that. But I'm going to do some more on Earth. I'm going out to, um, hopefully, this weekend, to Trenton Fairy Gardens. Um, and I'm going to do, do my Earth and Air at the same time. That'll be quite cool. Um, so for fairies, I was doing like inspiration of fairy fashions. I drew fairy faces and I took inspiration from ethnic faces. So rather than just, yeah, boring, pretty white girls, you know, there's nothing wrong with drawing pretty white girls if that's what you want to draw. But sometimes I want something different. And to me, if you say fairy, fairy sounds exotic. Um, fae always makes me think Celtic. Pale skin, long red hair. That's fae. But fairy just sounds exotic to me. So I thought, well, if I'm going to draw fairies and they feel exotic, why not find them some exotic costumes or some interesting costumes? Why not find them some exotic faces? Why not find them some exotic colours of birds? Um, so this is the fairy colours. You know, originally I thought, well, I could take inspiration for the wings. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. If you take a humanoid creature and you give it bird wings, it becomes an angel. I don't want it to look like an angel. I want it to look like a fairy. So specifically insect wings. So I haven't done that yet. I'm, I've done butterfly wings. But I also want to do insect wings because I like. And then this is one that I'm kind of putting together ideas for one that I want to draw. I really loved this paper dress. It's made out of woven paper, people. Woven paper. Paper flowers, all of it. Um, I really liked this colour combination. I like these wings. I, wouldn't those wings look beautiful in those colours? Just fabulous. Um, then I've got dark angels as well, of course. Uh, we're on to Earth Week this week. I haven't done anything for, for... Sorry, fire. I haven't done anything for fire yet. I plan to draw flowers. <laughs> um, this is not my art. This is by Gwen Davies. Uh, it's from a book, but I love this style of art. I love the whole feel of this piece. And it just it just said litha to me. It just said summer solstice. You know, let the sun shine in, which is also from let the sun shine, let the sun shine in. Where's that song from? Nobody knows. It's from the musical Hair, which is a hippie song. Eh, hey, Ina knows. There we go. It's a hippie type song. Closely followed by This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. I love Hair. It's my favourite. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, I'm a musical nerd. I'm sorry. You didn't know that about me, did you? Um, so I've, I've collected a few things for fire, but not very much. I found, because it's going to thunder this weekend, we're going to have some thunderstorms. This was all about, this is a cutting from a magazine. It's actually this month's, oh, this month, July 2019. If you're in the UK, or I don't know if you can get it outside the UK, Spirit and Destiny, July 2019. This month's thing is all about, all about creativity. There is so much in there about creativity. So if you're into that kind of stuff, go and get this magazine. It's a little bit expensive. It's £6, but it's got a lot of really good articles in. It's got a couple of really good books in it. I've actually put one of the books further back. I've cut out the information for the book because I want to get the book and read it because there were excerpts from the book and I really enjoyed them. Um, it's got loads of pictures that you can cut out. Oh, it's well worth the £6 this month. Not always, but this month it is. July 2019 version. Spirit and Destiny. You'll find it just about everywhere. Asda sell it. <laughs> yeah, it's a supermarket mag. It's, it's all over the place. Um, and they had a, a little book with it as well, which I... I didn't really like it. I didn't think it was that good. But there was a couple of good quotes in it, which I've kept. Um, trees are poems that the earth writes on the sky. In a forest of a 100,000 trees, no two leaves are alike, just as no two journeys along the path, same path are the same. The mountains are calling, I must go. Just, I just pulled out the ones that spoke to me and recycled the rest. I'd rather die of passion than of boredom. Yes. Yes, it is Ju Luna. It's the same one that I stopped buying. I it it went all Oh, I talked to angels. It went from being a witchy magazine and a a well-being magazine and a you know, bring a little magic into your life kind of magazine to being I talked to angels and my dead great-great-grandpa visited me in hospital, you know. And that's all it was. And silly mantras. So I stopped buying it. But I saw this one thing. It had fire up your creativity all across the cover. And of course, we're doing fire festival. It's litter and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, OK. Midsummer, fire energy, creativity, doing a creativity class. Maybe that's the universe saying, hey, look inside this magazine this month. And I flipped through it and the first five things I looked at, I loved. So I bought it. I don't normally buy it. I stopped buying it when the or the uh, editor changed. Um, I haven't done anything for the rest of it because this is all fire and water. But I did, like I say, we're going to have thunder this weekend. Um, <laughs> I'll send the kids to the co-op. <laughs> oh. send the dog down with a fiver <laughs> um yeah I, this was all about thunder therapy and how how you can harness the energy of thunder um there's a according to a 2016 study by researchers at brighton and sussex medical school Natural sounds alter neuro, neural pathways in our brains, helping us to reach a calmer state of mind. Thunder therapy is a more recent extension of this belief with many apps dedicated to the trend. Um, and then it talks about a, a particular um, rain app. I actually use one. I've got, a, I've, I don't have it on my phone. I've got it on my, my, my uh, tablet next door. Um, I've got it set up for rain and thunder all night, every night. I love it. It helps me sleep. I find it really relaxing. And if I don't put it on or if it stops, I wake up. I don't, I don't want that. Anyway. It was a rambly coffee chat today, but I hope it um, inspired you a bit. <laughs> Where do you get your inspiration? Well, it just kind of comes at me all at once, to be honest. Um, I thought something that you could do. Here's an idea for those of you who struggle with writing down ideas. I know there's there's always the one in the class. Uh, today it's John who writes everything down. Um, I often 
get too distracted to write things down. That's my fire energy kicking in. I think of an idea and then I'm like, oh, I'll grab that idea as well. But I'm just on the way over here to start this. Um, and I forget to write down all the other ideas. I often say I have too many ideas to, to worry about writing them down because they'll all come around again. Um, but, you know, if you're not one of those people who naturally writes things down all the time, get into a habit of once a day or once a week or just when just before you start sitting down to do something creative you know when you're in that moment of well I want to do something creative but I don't know what to do start a list in your journal of everything I could write I know I could put in my journal And every time you are in that moment of, well, I want to draw something, but I don't know what to draw. Write down three things on your list that you could put in your journal. Not that you want to put in your journal or you know how to put in your journal or that you can draw in your journal because you know how to draw that one particular thing. Not, not any of that. Stop filtering it. Unfiltered. A list of things that you can put in your journal or could put in your journal if you have to put a caveat on that put an if on the end i could put this in my journal if that's fine if you need to do that do that i guarantee you by the end of the week you'll have so many ideas written down that the next time you come down and say okay I want to draw something, but I don't know what to draw. You look down that list and there will be something in that list that you can draw. You might look at the list and go, oh, yeah, but I don't feel like drawing any of those. Hi, cancers. Um, but I don't know how to draw that. Virgo. But but I, I want I, I don't have the time. Capricorn. Because you're too busy doing everything else. I don't have the time to do that. Well, that's fine. If you don't have the time to do that, use that creative moment that you have. That Use that creative itch to write down another three things that you could do if you had the time. Who says that a journal can't just be a list of things that you would put in your journal or could put in your journal if you had the time? Is there anybody who says that that's not journaling? Not to my knowledge. The only person who can say that that's not journaling is you. And we know what we do with Nora Judgy McJudgy face, don't we? We tell her to... How about you stop judging my ideas? I'm only writing a list. I'm not doing it. So the fact that I can't draw two, two parallel straight lines doesn't matter. I'm not going to draw a pen. I'm just writing down the idea that I could draw a pen if I could draw two straight lines. OK, so while I'm doing that, why don't you go and work out how to draw two, two straight lines? What am I going to need to do to learn how to draw two straight lines? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, Luna. Who said that? That's another of my favourite quotes. If you don't have time to journal for 15 minutes, you need to journal for an hour. Absolutely. And what did we say at the beginning? Planning. Planning is problem solving. Problem solving is creativity. Therefore, planning is also journaling and art. Technically, if you could write a list of things you could put in your journal, you, you have put them in your journal. Yeah, exactly. So how is that not journaling? And sooner or later, you'll you'll get bored with that. Or you'll one day you'll sit down and you go, you know what? I'm not going to write three things today. I'm just going to do one of these things that I, I said I was going to do. Because I really wanted to do that one. There'll always be something on the list that itches at you. <laughs> they don't know that john it's our secret shh don't tell anybody <laughs> we'll get drunk karen to do that shh, 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 secret secret don't tell anybody 
<laughs> so, of course, there's always going to be one who's like, oh, well, I'm not going to put it in my journal. I'm going to start another book for that one. I'm going to start another book. Now, you might be wondering why I'm doing all this today. Well, it all ties into One Book July, and I'm not going to tell you how. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> inspiration and creativity and the yes, but how and bridging the gap between art and craft and journaling and creating and planning and squishing it all together into one place. Learning to see your ability to write a list as being creative. Learning to see your ability to create a recipe and write it down as creative. Learning that life is art and life is what you put in your journal is what One Book July is about this year. <laughs> And now you're going to have to wait for Vicky to tell you the rest. We do have a specific challenge. We always have a specific challenge. Um, but we asked for ideas. OK, we asked you guys for ideas. And one of the things that came up was creative planning. And we kind of squished it a bit and pushed it and turned it around the other way you know stretched it out cut it in half folded it around that's why you love that quote yeah if you don't have time to journal for 15 minutes you need to journal for an hour and you know what 15 minutes if you most coffee makers takes three minutes to make a cup of coffee. Most kettles, it takes three to five minutes. If you've got an old kettle like mine, it can take up to eight minutes. It depends how much water you put in it. But you've got at least three minutes every day. If you drink more than one cup of coffee or tea, then you've got multiple three minutes a day. So let's say you have three hot drinks a day. Or whatever it is that you make. If you journal during those times or in the five minutes you're waiting for your coffee to cool down. <laughs> yeah, it was you, Cody. It was you, Cody. It was Cody's. I forgot you were here because you were so quiet. It was Cody's idea. Um, if you journal during the few minutes that it takes you to get your coffee to cool down you know who gets who even goes to a drive through to get a starbucks and then doesn't stop somewhere for a few minutes or pull over for a few minutes and drink their coffee while it's hot or at least take a little bit of your coffee everybody does it even if you're in a rush and you're getting to work you get to work. Once you're there, you stop and you drink your coffee, right? Use that time to be creative. There's a reason why I'm always making stuff. I've always got a cup of coffee in hand. Because I use that time while I'm making my coffee to think about what I'm going to do when I sit down and drink my coffee. When I sit, do when I think about what I'm going to do, by the time I come to sit down at a page, I already know what I'm going to do. And if I don't already know what I'm going to do, I've got a list of things that I've written in my journal that I could do and I can just pick one. And if all else fails, I just grab a magazine and a pair of scissors and start cutting. Cut and paste. Because it doesn't matter. Do you have to make a pretty collage? No. Oh, I like this picture. It goes on that page. I'll stick it there. I've got another one somewhere. I really liked the picture, but I didn't know what to do with it. So I stuck it on a page. I'm trying not to give you too many spoilers for my journal before I do this. There you go. 
I really liked that picture. I loved the way she was sat. I liked her rings. Her pen is pretty. Everything about that picture just speaks to me. Even the fact that she's got short, dark nails, which is what I do. Everything about that picture speaks to me. It had something else printed here. So I tore that bit off. And I was like, well, I don't know where to stick that. Oh, stick it there then. I'll think of something to do with it later. You know, later I'll go, oh, you know, maybe I could, maybe I could draw her face here. Or maybe I could, you know, do something coming out of the book. Maybe I could, you know, what ideas? What's she writing? And like, maybe I could turn a, a big quote. In fact, that's just given me an idea. That quote, that Helena Bonham Carter quote is massive. No, I don't want to open it. Go away. That Helena Bonham Carter quote is huge. I could do it like that, as if she's writing it in her journal. I could draw the page as if it's what she's looking at, you know? And I could write that quote in. Bam! There's an idea for that page. See? Ideas just hit me out of nowhere. Will I remember that? Well, oh, probably not if I don't write it down. Will I have another idea? Yeah. Buses. Ideas are like buses. There's always another one. Sometimes you just have to wait a while. On a day when you don't feel like starting something new, you can go and finish two or three pages. Yeah, that's what I do. Like that. I don't know what else to do with that page. I have no idea what else to do with that page. I have zero inspiration for this page. Although I did think maybe I might draw her there, but I don't feel like doing it. So I haven't done it. Why am I going to force myself to do something that I don't feel like doing right now? And I'm not entirely sure that I want to put it there. And Why would I focus all of my energy and allow Nora to cage in all this creativity I have and all these ideas and all this, oh, but I want to make something by saying, um, but that's what you want to do isn't going to fit on that page. I know you love these bits, but they don't fit on that page because they're really their flowers and the flowers is the fire section. So you can't really put them here. I mean, I know they're leaves, but they're not. They're also flowers and it's going to bug you. And you were going to put this in the fire section in the first place. So you don't. Really, that's Nora talking. OK, what do we say to Nora? Shut up. Go and, go and think about what we're going to do with these in the fire section. OK, let me worry about this page. And if you get to the point where you go, well, I really don't know what to do with that page. OK, oh, what about this one? <laughs> you know, what do I feel like doing on this one? You know, this is acrylic, by the way. This is this is something I haven't done before, especially in this colour. But I was watching a James Gurney tutorial. Oh, James Gurney is a god. What he can't do with a bit of watercolour and some gouache is amazing. Um, he uses this technique called oh what's it called something green i talked about it in class the other day girls what did i call what what, what did he call it um it's a word that means ubiquitous common um not neutral I can't remember. He calls it a specific green. It's the green that all leaves give off when you shine light through them. All green leaves give off the same green light when you look through them at them through sunlight. Um, it's something to do with the photo, not photosynthesis, phosphorus filters. Is that what he called it? I don't know. I'll have to find the video and link it below. It's really clever anyway. But he used a green acrylic. No, he uses casein, but acrylic works too. He uses a, a this bright green to start the lighter tones. Oh, incoming thunderstorm. Yeah, it's looking a bit that way here too. Hopefully it's going to miss us. Stay safe, Ina. Leaf green. No, that's the, that's the colour. That's the... That's the, the colour out of the tube is leaf green. He called it, it's got a specific term. 
It's basically light with the bit filtered out that the green gets rid of. Without the blue light, I think. I can't remember. I'll link the video down below. I'll find it and I'll link it down below after the session. Uh, I can't do it now or it'll, it'll disappear when I stop. Um, but he uses this green to draw this kind of stuff so that when he's drawing this kind of light coming through the leaf, he doesn't have to draw that bit. He's already got that glow in the background. And because it's coming up from the background and he's putting translucent glazes over the top, it gives you that effect of light coming through the trees. It's really, really clever. Blew my mind. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I've painted on white. I've painted on grey. I've painted on black. I've painted on stone. I've painted on beige. I've painted on cream. I never ever thought to paint an entire page bright green and start from there so I, I thought well you know what what's the worst that can happen it can look a total mess it can look really bad uh I could abs I could learn absolutely nothing for it and discover that it's a completely failed technique that I'm never going to master and I hate it and you know what you know what I'll do with it then that's what I'll do with black paint holds everything never mind gesso black paint if you don't like it paint over it but don't paint over it because Nora tells you to paint over it paint over it because you decide that there is no point in keeping that because you didn't learn anything from it you don't like it you don't want it but we all have some sketches like that everybody has some sketches like that Everybody has some pages like that, you know, those pages that you're like, yeah, I'm halfway through my journal and I really wish I could, I could just pull that page out. I've, I've just had one. I'm trying to salvage it first. I've got one in this book. I, I stopped working in this book. This is my sketchbook and I stopped working in it, um, partly because I'm using that one specifically for midsummer. Um, but I drew this. And I hated it. Absolutely hated it. And every time I looked at it, I hated it even more. So this morning I said, you know what? I'm going to try and salvage it. And if I can't salvage it, I'm going to stick something over it. Or I'm just going to paint over it. Because a big patch of black paint, I can do something with. A collage piece, I can do something with. Yeah, you've learned what, some what doesn't work. Sometimes you've learned that what doesn't work is that technique for you. That's what I mean by that. Yeah, yes, you always learn what doesn't work or what does work or, you know, 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb and all that. I'm talking more specifically in terms of when you just know that, that yeah, I'm never going to revisit this. I know I don't like this. I don't like the picture. I don't like the technique. I don't like anything about it. I never want to do it again. <laughs> this is not for me. Uh, and then, you know, if you're really at that stage and you can't just say, well, but I learned that I didn't like that mistake. Sometimes you can't just rise above it. That's what black paint's for. OK, just paint over it. It's not the end of the world. If you hate it that much, it's not that big of a loss if you paint over it. But don't take pages out of your journal because you will damage the spine. Stick them together if you must. Um, in fact, was it by Bun? I think it might have been. I think it might have been Roxanne. She had pages in her journal that there was one page that she really didn't like, but she loved the pages on the other two sides. So instead of painting out this page or you know, pulling these pages out. She couldn't do that because she liked what was on the other side of the pages. What did she do? She sewed these two pages together to add stitching to this page and this page, which she already loved. There's always a way around it. There's always a way around it. And, it, you know, sometimes that way around it is black paint. But yeah, I'm trying to salvage that one. I'm not I'm not hating it so much. When I just opened it just now, I didn't look at it and go, God, I hate that picture. Um, I looked at it and went, yeah, it's not as bad as it was. So maybe I can salvage it. <laughs> maybe I can. If I can't, that's what black paint's for.
and then I can get back into this journal, which is probably going to be the one I use for One Book July. No surprise there. It's the journal I was using before this one. It's the journal I'll go back to. I just, you know, no need to start another journal if I've already got one. But, um, and then this one probably will have some spare pages in it. So this one I will probably keep as my inspiration journal. And instead of going, oh, okay, well, you know, this section is about earth. And therefore, I can only do earth things in it. Uh, I'll just expand it a bit and go, well, you know, leaves, trees, earth, literally the earth, the earth, the globe, the planet, landscapes. There you go. That fits into Earth Week. Um, green, green and brown. That fits into Earth Week. Um, maybe even white and brown when you get into winter. You know, I'll, I'll be able to fill these up. I specifically divided this book into four with shiny washi tape, earth, you have to use glittery washi tape, come on, air, I didn't have enough of the holographic one, fire, that's a pretty one, and water. Just so that it was easy to find where my sections were. That's the only reason I did it. Um, and so that I could feel free to move on from Earth Week and not go, oh, but where do I want to start air? Well, I already know where I'm starting air. I'm starting it here. So I don't have to worry about it. You were talking about selling some prints. I am still going to sell some prints. Uh, I've been trying to source a local printer. Well... <laughs> that's a that's a, an entertaining one um i i know a lot more people now than i did before uh, and i thought maybe it was just that i didn't know the right people but no apparently there's very few printers who will do art quality prints um just on a kind of can you do 20 of these and 20 of these kind of basis i don't know why it's all money and it's not like they have to do anything special it's just printing a file but you know I could understand if it was jiggly prints or something, but it's not. It's just it's just printing. But no, they'd rather take a thousand leaflets from the local barbecue shop and do those. Mm -hmm. Um, hi Boo. It's time, is it? Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to do some through Awesome Merch, but Awesome Merch, like most online printers, has a thing where you have to manipulate your files into a certain format and, and this, that and the other. And then I want to get some um, sample prints to make sure that they are printing the way I want them to look. It's a long process. It's a lot longer than I anticipated. Because, you know, I thought you could just go to a print shop and say, can you print me 15 of these? I'll come and pick them up next week. Tell me how much it is. I thought that's what print shops were for. But no. Um, and we don't have a local Staples, unfortunately. Staples do that. And Staples are very good at that. And you can even email them a PDF of what you want printed and then go and pick it up later. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have a local Staples. Well, we do, but it's in town. Doesn't The one in town has a post office, so it doesn't have a print shop. And the other one is like 30 miles away, so... Yeah, I'm going to try and use Awesome Merch, which is what Fran recommended. Uh, and I know Fran is very picky about her print quality. So if Fran says they're good, then they probably are. So I'm going to try those. But yeah, it's a, it's a long process. Um, but I will still be trying to get some pre-orders up for students. So keep an eye on the site, Sue, because you're a, you're a member of the site. Therefore, you'll be able to order a pre-order. Yeah, so there you go. I'm going to stop there for today. My inspiration has not run dry. I could carry on talking for hours, you know me, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go and use my inspiration for my own stuff. Maddie's looking a little fretful. She's come to hide under the desk. 
So I'm thinking we might have thunder in the air. Are you right, baby? She's doing that thing where she leaks, like when she does that, she's getting nervous. So I think we might have thunder coming. It is looking a bit dark. Yeah, nothing's ever easy. Awesome merch is easy, but Whoa. once you've got it set up. So once I know what I need to do and how I need to do it and how I need to rewatch, re-jig the images and what format I need to do, I'll, I'll be fine. But you know me and following instructions. I'm not an instruction watcher. Uh, an instruction people keep saying watch in the comments and that's why i keep saying watch <laughs> uh, i'm not an in, i'm not an instruction follower so following a linear progression of i have to do this that and the other is not my favorite thing to do but i need to do it and i'm going to i will it's coming i promise <laughs> I will definitely have prints coming Whoa. and a few other things, hopefully, in time for being able to buy stuff early for Christmas. So if you want to spread out your Christmas presents or treat yourself or something like that, then there will be plenty of time. So I'm not going to, like, put the shop up in December or something like that. Um, I will I will definitely have it sooner rather than later, but Whoa. not right now. <laughs> Yeah, the stream would be rewatchable. Oh, oh, He's decided he needs to go for the W word. Hopefully it won't rain. <laughs> Maddie's looking a bit stressed and hot, so I think we've got thunder coming. I better take them out. Thanks for joining me. Hope today was useful. I know I ramble, but, you know, that's what you're here for, right? Um... Keep an eye out on oh, One Book July, right. Carrie Harling, Everyday Awesome TV, Miss Vicky B and myself. That's the four contributors. And you can also subscribe to our main YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash One Book July. We have our own HTML list. URL. URL. Yay. Um, spoiled the song by not knowing the words <laughs> typical for me um yes follow one book july on youtube follow the four of us on youtube keep an eye out for miss vicky b sometime over this weekend or early next week she will be putting up a video to introduce what all this creative planning stuff might be for one book july hmm it's not really creative planning but that's what gave us the idea we asked for ideas and we squished it around a bit. So we're still going to credit Cody and say, well, she was the suggestion that gave us the idea. But, um, yeah. Vicky went, oh, why don't we do such and such? <laughs> so that's inspiration at work for you. There you go. OK, have fun. See you all again soon. I have changed up my schedule. I put it in an announcement the other day, but if you missed it, Wednesdays at five on YouTube, Fridays from lunchtime, 12 or one o'clock ish, depending. So sign up, follow, make sure you've got notifications on. Um, but I will normally let you know on Instagram what time I'm going to start streaming. It basically depends what time I get up, to be honest. Um, but I'm hoping to just start painting on a Friday and just finish when I finish instead of having this two hour window where I have to do it and then I have to go and have lunch. Um, I just would feel more comfortable if I've got time to just do whatever I want for as long as I want to do it. So that's the plan. And then that gives me Wednesday mornings clear because I've got a lot of editing to do for the Urban Sketches weekend videos. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> I'm very busy. So I'm going to go and take the dogs out and be more busy. See you again soon. Bye, guys.